The Washington Post found more than 184 parent groups in at least 34 states are pushing for more parental involvement in public schools. Most of these organizations were created within the last few years. And now we want to bring into the discussion a group that is against what it calls censorship in school libraries. With us now is the founder of Florida Freedom to Read Project, Stefana Farrell. Her hope is to unite parents in Florida to protect students' access to diverse resources. Stefana, we appreciate you being here with us. Thank you very much for having me, Lauren. So, you know, we've seen more parent involvement in schools recently, including some larger ones who are heavily funded. My question for you just at the top, you know, what made you want to start this organization now and really get involved in the conversation? So public school has always been the only option for our family. Both my husband and I grew up in public education and it we feel it best represents the world that our kids are going to move into as adults. And so when we saw these attacks happening, um, my co-founder and I, Jen Cousins, um, we got incredibly nervous about, you know, this this attack, this this consorted effort to to bring um, distrust into the public education system, right? We, we're seeing our teachers being attacked. We're seeing um, access to information um, being withheld. And that is not what we signed up for um, as advocates and as users of the public education school system. We want diverse um, conversations. We want to have um, our teachers to feel free to have controversial conversations that might test our children's beliefs um, because we're confident that if something is said that they have doubts about, they'll come back to us at home and they're going to ask us about it and we can have additional conversations and their learning just blooms. When would you say you started to see these attacks, uh, you know, in your school start to really ratchet up? Uh, in, the, in the state of Florida, attacks started at the end of October into November. And then as we headed into the new year, um, by the time February came around, there were over 200 book challenges in the state of Florida. Wow. Let me ask you, because, you know, your organization's co-founder has a child who identifies as gender non-binary. And I know that you have two biracial children. So, you know, what goes through your mind when many books regarding gender or race are being questioned? <sighs> you know, it's it's sad to think that um, there's this push from one side of the argument that any conversations about sexual orientation or gender identity automatically equates to conversations about sex when it comes to same sex couples, and it it's incredibly uncomfortable to think that we have parents that want to really limit conversations about people that exist in this world because of their own fears. Um, you know, we I know for a fact my kids are attending school with with people that have or with other kids that have same sex parents. And I want them to be comfortable and feel supported. Every child has a right to feel supported and safe in their classroom environment. And if they can't talk to their teacher the same way that my children who have a mommy and a daddy can talk to their teacher. It's it's not right. It's and it's not what what we should believe as Americans. <laughs> um, it should it's not it's not in alignment with American values. Right. We we all have a right to live the way we want to live and be and we should be accepting of others differences. Have your kids brought up anything regarding this subject? Have they come home to you and, you know, talked about, hey, this book is gone or, you know, have an awareness over this conversation? So my children are in kindergarten and third grade. Um, and I can tell you right now, they actually have never had a conversation about sexual orientation or gender identity in their classroom. Um, we have he, they have come home and mentioned the fact that they've had anti-bullying conversations where we don't bully others just because they, ha they are a different gender, because they dress differently than how we think that they should dress. Um, but that's the extent of it. Uh, so they really haven't noticed that anything has gone missing or been left out from their classroom. I know as they get older and, and Jen does have older children, they are very much aware of what is happening um, and they are worried, uh, rightfully so. You know, lawmakers across the country are implementing certain laws related to education in public schools and in Florida where you live, Stefana. Governor Ron DeSantis signed the controversial 
parental rights and education bill, which critics have labeled as the Don't Say Gay bill. And it, it bans the teaching of sexual orientation or gender identity in kindergarten through third grade, your kids, kindergarten, third grade. How do you feel about, you know, really the spike in politics that's related to this? So I'll say this. I never once worried about indoctrination happening in my school until the governor ordered these bills to be written and our legislature passed them. Um, the bills limit access to information. And when our government starts deciding what can and cannot be discussed in the classroom is when you, that's when you actually go down the path of indoctrination. As long as we provide access to elected learning, especially in the library, you can't be accused justifiably of indoctrinating anyone. My bottom line question for you, schools have the option to provide certain books related to race or LGBTQ stories. And just because they're on a shelf doesn't necessarily mean that kids have to read them. I remember going to the library and I really just gravitated to Harry Potter. That was it. So my question is, is banning books the answer? Absolutely not. We need to make sure that there is a book on the shelf that appeals to every student. And the fact of the matter is some students have very different looking lives than others. And so if there is a challenging book that's going to be there for one child that might be a concept that's a little bit too mature, it might be the right book to really reach another child to make them feel as if they're seen and they're not alone. So, you know, my pushback here is if you're a parent and you're concerned about what your child might pick up and read in the library, have the conversation with your child. Set the boundaries that you want to set for your family. But let's let's stop it there. Let's not set boundaries for other families. Let's not limit other children who might really need access to those books, especially when it comes to LGBTQ plus books. Those books could be suicide prevention. Um, those, you know, those children have a higher rate of suicide, one in five um, transgender or gender uh, non-binary children have had suicidal ideations and books can be their first line of support. So we need to make sure that they can access those. All right, Stefana Farrell, thank you for joining us on The Why and for sharing your insight. We really appreciate it. Thanks again for having me.